Coming up, we went to Universal Studios Florida to try some savory crepes. From Orlando, Florida, this is the Universal Edition of The Diz Unplugged. This is episode 271 of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. The Diz Unplugged Universal Edition is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect universal vacation. Visit them on the web at www.dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of the Diz Unplugged Universal Edition. I am your host, Craig Williams. I'll be joined in just a little bit by my co-host, Rhino. Uh, But in the meantime, I'm going to explain to you what's actually happening in this episode. So uh, as I mentioned in the cold open, we did go to Universal Studios Florida to try out the new Crip stand that is open at Universal Studios Florida. And uh, first off, let me just say right away, I try to uh, listen to myself pronouncing Crip all the time. And like there, I put an R roll in for some reason. I'm going to screw it up a lot. So uh, please just be patient with me. I wish that I was better at speaking French, but I'm not even great at speaking English. And so I'm going to give myself a pass on that. And at least I'm not just going all out and saying crepe. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, not that there's anything wrong with that, except Except, well, it's not the way to say it, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna screw it up a lot. I'm gonna judge myself a lot during this, so uh, just please bear with me on it. But, anyways, we went to Universal Studios Florida. We knew that it was going to rain today, and so we were just kind of we were kind of timing it the right way, where we didn't want to go too early when it, things were a little bit busier and with the lunch rush and stuff. But we didn't want to go too late that we ran into the thunderstorms, and essentially we did. Uh, we we were able to get inside the park and then we we wanted to break it up where we each ordered a savory crepe and then we went back and we each ordered a sweet crepe so that way we got a nice big basis of the menu there. So there's six different items on the menu. Uh, there is a chicken and goat cheese crepe, uh, a brisket crepe, and that's what I got. Then there is a vegan sausage crepe, and that makes up the savory list, and all of those are $7.99. And then for the sweet crepes, there is a cookies and cream one, a strawberry and Nutella one, and then a blueberry lemon one. And all those are $6.99, if I am correct in my... uh, In my knowledge on that, I don't remember what the menu said and I don't have it in front of me because that's, you know, that's definitely paying attention. Yes, I was correct. All of the savory ones are $7.99. And the sweet ones are $6.99. And uh, so, yeah, we wanted to be able to get two of each. But by the time we were finished eating the, the savory ones, the thunderstorms were starting to roll in. Like we were sitting right outside of... Uh, outside of Moe's Tavern and in the Duff Bar and and we were Duff, Duff Gardens that is and so we were watching the rain start on on the little pond lake there at Universal Studios Florida and decided that we needed to get out because it was looking really bad and then it got really really bad so we made the right decision in leaving but we didn't get to do our full review because of that so unfortunately we only uh, got to do half of the review so this is a review of two of the savory crepes that you can get at central park crepes food and drinks i think i just said crepes there and that's where i told you i'm gonna judge myself thoroughly on this one and it's, it's why i don't even want to keep saying it but i keep saying it i can't stop myself from saying it but anyways i'm gonna go ahead now and take us to universal studios florida where we recorded our actual uh our review portion so i believe we're going to be finally meeting up with rhino here to cut in and find out his opinion of what he ordered so keep watching or listening I got the chicken and goat cheese uh, crepe, and uh, it has chicken, 
arugula, goat cheese, there's some mushrooms in here, pesto, all a little wrapped up in this little guy here, and it, boy oh boy is it hot while I'm holding it here. And boy oh boy is it hot outside. I am literally drenched in sweat right now, so nothing like a hot, hot thing on a hot day. I'm excited for this though. There's a lot of goat cheese in this. I'm sorry, goat cheese is such a, like a, I don't know how you want to describe it, a thick cheese, if that makes sense. Like, uh, what's the cheese that's in lasagna? Ricotta? Ricotta. It's like a thicker ricotta is what it feels like to me, but I just, I love arugula. I love the taste of this. It's definitely very flavorful. Um, I feel like I have to get a little bit deeper in here. I don't think I got any of the mushrooms. Oh yeah, good. no, you gotta get real deep. Mm. There you go. That one felt better. I felt better oh, yeah. about that bite. There's some mushrooms tucked off to the side over here, I feel them, but... Not always a big fan of mushrooms, but I feel like it works really well with all of this. I I enjoy this. I like how thin the crepe is, but I was worried it was going to be one of those situations where the crepe would just kind of like fall apart as I was trying to eat it or when it was wrapped up in here. So it was all just kind of like a show for gimmick, but it's like a nice, nice little thin... Uh, like super thin kind of tortilla texture to it, but uh, oh no, my napkins are blown away. Um, this was like six ninety nine. Seven ninety nine. With a pass holder discount, I don't know what it actually brought it to, but seven ninety nine. It's just like okay. I, actually, I think this is really good. The goat, like I said, the goat cheese is really flavorful and thick, but it does feel like it's almost that scene in Anchorman where he starts drinking the milk on the hot day and he's like, milk was a bad choice. And I think uh, goat cheese on a nice hot summer day. Um, so far, I really like this. I feel like all the ingredients are really fresh. Um, I just got some of that pesto too, which is flavorful, which is nice because sometimes I feel like pesto will be in stuff and it's just for color. It's not for like any flavor or anything like that, but um, so far so good. I'm kind of digging it, but I, I know you're desperately trying to hold the camera and yours together. So why don't I let you take a bite of yours? I'll wrap my guy back up here. I went with, for the savory one, I went with the smoked brisket, which is filled with smoked brisket, pepper jack cheese, coleslaw, and golden barbecue ranch. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I will be honest, looking at the menu, I would jump to more for a crepe. I would jump to the the chicken and goat cheese first, but smoked brisket, uh, smoked brisket, you know, that's always right up my alley. I am the chief resident brisket expert. This looks like a very thin sliced piece of brisket on there. I'll be interested how you chew through the brisket and the crepe all together. Well, it helps that the brisket is thin so, not thin so slicely, it is sliced so thinly that it's really easy to actually chew all the way through it. Brisket's got a good flavor. It's uh, just a little smokiness to it, so not overly salty or anything. Actually really, really nice. Slaw adds a nice little decent uh, crunch to the entire thing as well too, so. Can I see your filling? Can you show me? I, I'm just que curious how hearty it is. Hmm. It's it's uh, decently hearty, decently hearty. But yeah, the, uh, the slaw definitely adds a slight crunch. Not overly crunchy, but slight crunch. Uh, the, the barbecue sauce, I can taste it in there, but it's not like, it's not overly sauced up, which I was kind of expecting like, okay, this is just gonna be sloppy and messy. And it's pretty balanced. And the cheese is kind of lost on me in here. I know it's in there, but it's not it's not overly packed with cheese. So I'd say the balance on this is uh, pretty decent. But just as you kind of mentioned, in terms of it being hearty, I'm gonna see how I feel about even finishing all of this. This feels really heavy. And I, I'm already gonna say that with the crepe stand, 
that literally for the price that you're paying, $7.99 for a savory one, it's one of the best uh, best budget mm -hmm. meals that you could probably have in this park, as long as you like what they're serving up. But let's go ahead and finish and then move on. And again, we, uh, we didn't have time to actually film, well, as you saw, a proper intro, but we also didn't have time to film an outro too. So I asked Rhino to just record some of his thoughts and share them with us so I could, uh, I could splice that in just in case anything changed from the time we recorded to, to the time that we were going to be wrapping up anyway. So let's go ahead and hear what Rhino has to say. So as I'm sure Craig said, we hit a little bit of weather. Uh, it kind of like came in out of nowhere and incredibly fast, but we were lucky and made it to our uh, individual cars without any sort of uh, an issue, which was nice. Uh, I, however, was, uh, it, I, you might have heard me say in the video how hot it was. I was soaked through all of my clothes. Like I'm talking through my shorts. So, and that was just from sweat. So mm, I am a disgusting human being. So I have changed and showered, which I normally do when I go out into the world and have to come back these days, but it was also for uh, just for general purposes, but um, it's been probably about two hours since I had the, the crepe, though, and I gotta tell you, it was so good. I do not regret my decision at all. I know I made a, the Anchorman joke about uh, eating a hot crepe on a hot day, but I... I am like all of that food was like the chicken was good. The arugula was fresh. The mushrooms were actually really good and complemented the whole thing really well with that pesto that was in there. The only thing is the pesto at the very end can kind of it starts to drip out of the bottom of the crepe. So just be aware of that if you're going to try this one. Um, but I really enjoyed that you could take the crepe and go because it was all wrapped in that um, like brown paper bag material. And um, so you didn't need silverware. You didn't need uh, to like sit down anywhere. You could just take it and walk around. I mean, I'm glad we did uh, sit down in the shade a little bit because it was just so hot. So we recommend going down to the Simpsons area. Usually those tables have some umbrellas and uh, they're, it's a good place to social distance away from everyone. So you can feel a little more comfortable about having to pull the mask off while you're taking some bites and stuff. But we were really good. We took turns eating and stuff. So um, I... I just, I, if this crepe place existed somewhere that wasn't in a theme park, I would probably be going back and trying one of the other ones tonight. I am super bummed out we didn't get to try any of the dessert ones, though, because that lemon blueberry one was calling my name. It has, it's like lemon mascarpone, blueberries, lemon curd, whipped cream, pound cake, and powdered sugar. Mm, mm, mm. I always associated crepes as being a, a sweet thing, I guess. So the savory crepe is like a... It's a little less common for me. I've never been like a big crepe person, but uh, I I enjoyed this so much that this is probably going to be a, my like solid go to place. Like I I like um, I like the Springfield area for the Simpsons, and I like Diagon Alley. But all of those you kind of have to get in line, order your food, wait, and it comes out, or you have to wait for it and then you pay for it. The register, this was very like pay for it, grab it, go. And I think this is going to be a pretty popular place because my crepe again was only seven ninety nine, and then it was an annual pass holder discount on top of that. I think it's uh. I think it's going to be a popular place if crowds start to pick up in there. So I, I recommend it. Check it out. Let us know what you think, obviously. Um, that's that's really all I have to say about the crepe. So I'll toss it back over to Craig now. Wonderful. Just excellent. And for me, uh, the smoked biscuit crepe, uh, I you know what? I would get it again, actually. So I, I was paying attention to a lot of other reviews on on this dish because, you know, we obviously were a little late to the game. We didn't get there on day one when it when it opened to, to be among the first people to try out the stand. But uh, I, I paid attention to everyone else who was going there and reviewing the items. And I noticed that at least from the people that I follow, that there was a lot of complaints about the smoked brisket uh, crepe. And I didn't notice any issues with it. So uh, some people were saying, you know, cut down on the amount of slaw, maybe cut back on the sauce. And those were two issues that I just didn't even have with it at all. So uh, I don't know, maybe if they took that other feedback and started messing around with the with the item in between when it first opened and now, which has only been days. But you know what? It's 
it, it could have been feedback from more guests about that as well, too. So all, all I know is that I enjoyed the flavor. I enjoyed the smokiness that was coming out of it. And then just a hint of sweetness from the barbecue sauce and and still never quite found the cheese in there. It was never like overly cheesy, but that's not a bad thing because you don't want to be weighed down by cheese. But uh, for $7.99 with a universal uh, discount for annual pass holders, uh, I it's honestly one of the best snacks you can get. And it's one of the best meals that you can get. So I know for some people it would just be considered a snack, but for most people it's filling enough that it could be a meal, like to the point where we weren't, we, we couldn't have, we would have still eaten the sweet uh, ones just to, to try it and do the review properly. But uh, yeah, it would have been hard to stomach all of that. We probably would not have been able to eat the entire, the entire sweet crips. So uh, it's, I, I really, I'm, I'm really blown away by it. I cannot wait to go back and, and do a dessert review of, of the stand just so we can get that full experience then. But I'm very pleased with, with how it, uh, how it's starting, uh, how it's starting to pan out just from the early days of it. looks like it was a really, really great move, a really interesting spot because it's, it's right as you are about to go through the central park, uh, thoroughway that, uh, is in between Hollywood and Woody Woodpecker's kid zone. So, uh, it's, you know, on a normal park day, it's not, not really it's not really in a bad place but like for halloween horror nights it's kind of right in the way of where a scare zone would usually be there so kind of interesting but at the same point uh you know it's they found a nice little place to to drop in this stand that is another new food option that's making food fresh to order in front of your eyes pretty much too so i i cannot complain about that and i you know i know that there's plenty of uh crepe food trucks i hate saying it i'm almost done with this so i stopped saying it but there's plenty of food trucks in the florida region that that uh cook them up and and it's very, very popular around here. So I have a feeling the stand will be very popular for for the foreseeable future, at least. And and it's nice, too. I mean, it'll be nice once we don't have to wear masks or anything anymore. And it can truly be a nice handheld snack that you can carry around with you as you're walking around the park. But uh, yeah, overall, big thumbs up for me. And I think that's it for this review. And again, we'll have a sweet review in the future, but this is just a savory review. So in the meantime, if you need any extra information, please head over to disunplugged.com, uh, home of the show notes page for this show and all the others on the Disunplugged podcast network. You can find links to our social media channels and more. If you want to reach out and ask any questions directly to us, you can reach Rhino at R-Y-N-O-1185 on Instagram and Twitter. And then you can also reach me at Teleclaster on there as well too. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please make sure you are subscribed to our channel if you haven't yet and hit the bell button so you get notified when we have new videos released every day, except for the weekends, pretty much. And uh, please leave us comments and questions. We were going to do a, a question and answer show real soon, but we need questions in order to do that. So please, please start leaving us questions in the comments below and then hitting the thumbs up. And if you are listening to us on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Play, or any other place, please make sure you're subscribed and leaving us ratings and reviews so that way more people are able to find us. And if you have any questions for us for those review shows, again, just reach out to us on social media. We'll see the questions and we'll add them to the pile so that way we can answer them when we finally get around to it. So thank you everyone from watching. Thank you for not roasting me too much over my terrible pronunciations. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you again next week with another episode of the Dis Unplugged Universal Edition. Until then, everyone, remember, we still haven't changed the name. 